In this video, we're going to be considering relative motion. How fast an object looks like it's travelling depends on your motion as well as the motion of the object. So have you ever been in a train stopped at a station? As you're sitting on the stationary train, if another train goes past you, it can actually feel like you're on the moving train and the other train is stationary. That's because you observe the relative motion and sometimes your brain can interpret this as you moving rather than the train which is actually moving. So let's imagine that you're following another car. If the car in front is travelling at 60 kilometres per hour and you're travelling at 50 kilometres per hour, it looks to you like the car in front of you is travelling at 10 kilometres per hour. So we've actually got an equation that we can use to describe this situation. So the equation goes that the velocity of A relative to B is equal to the velocity of A minus the velocity of B. So in this example, you're in car B. So you want to work out the velocity of A relative to you. So that's the velocity of A, which is 60 kilometres per hour in the same direction you're travelling, minus your velocity, which is 50 kilometres per hour. Now remember that when we subtract a vector, to make it a negative vector, we just switch its direction. So what we've got now is 60 kilometres per hour in the direction you're travelling, plus 50 kilometres per hour in the opposite direction. When you add these two together, you're left with 10 kilometres per hour in the direction you're travelling. So that is how we use that formula to calculate the velocity of A relative to you. It's 10 kilometres per hour in the direction you're travelling. Now this formula works even when the objects aren't travelling in the same direction. Let's look at an example now where the two objects are travelling in perpendicular directions. So the question is, a police car heads north at 60 kilometres per hour. It comes to an intersection where it notices a motorcycle travelling at 80 kilometres per hour in an easterly direction. If the police car uses a radar gun to measure the speed of the motorcycle, what speed will it measure? So let's start by drawing a diagram. So here's the intersection. And we've got a police car here travelling in a northerly direction at 60 kilometres per hour. And we've got a motorcycle travelling towards the east at 80 kilometres per hour. And what we need to work out is what's the velocity of the motorcycle relative to the police car. So that's the velocity of the motorcycle minus the velocity of the police car. Now we need to remember that these are vectors, so let's draw the line underneath them to show that they are vectors. And so when we're subtracting vectors like this, we've got 80 kilometres per hour as the velocity of the motorcycle minus the velocity of the police car, which is 60 kilometres per hour upwards. And so we can write this as 80 kilometres per hour towards the east plus... 60 kilometres per hour towards the south because when we subtract a vector we can reverse its direction and add it instead of subtracting it. And now to add these vectors we need to draw them head to tail. So vector 1 here is 80 kilometres per hour, vector 2 here is 60 kilometres per hour and so the resultant is this vector down here. And so to work that out, this is 90 degrees here, so we can use Pythagoras' theorem. It's 80 squared plus 60 squared, which when we solve that on the calculator, we end up with 100 kilometres per hour. So the radar gun is going to detect a speed of 100 kilometres per hour. As an exercise for you, it would be a good idea to work out what this angle is here so that you could give the velocity. The question only asks us to find the speed, but that would be good practice. Now a really important rule in physics is that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. 
So an inertial reference frame is one in which there's no acceleration or unbalanced forces acting. So at the moment, I'm inertial because I've got my weight force acting down, but it's balanced by the reaction force from the ground acting upwards. So you can't actually conduct an experiment in a reference frame to work out the absolute velocity of that reference frame. Now Einstein was the first to fully recognise this and he used this rule to come up with special relativity and general relativity. So if you're interested in those, they're really well described in Joe Wolfe's PhysClip site, so I'd recommend that you go and have a look at that. Now let's consider reference frames a bit more. Let's have a look at this demonstration and discuss how it looks from two different frames of reference. Now let's start by, this is a slow action replay, we'll start by considering it from the reference frame of the camera. In this case, the golf ball traces out a parabolic path as it falls. So you can see the points it's passed through sketched out on the screen. Now what's happening here is we're considering it from my reference frame. So this blue line is pretty much in the same position relative to me. And you can see how the ball drops down right beside the blue line and bounces up. And so in my reference frame, it likes, looks like the ball is just dropping and bouncing vertically with no horizontal movement. So in this short video, you've seen how to calculate relative velocities for two objects. You've also been introduced to the idea that inertial reference frames are all equivalent and there's no way to measure the absolute velocity of a reference frame. So this all led to special and general relativity which you're free to investigate on your own if you'd like to.